I'm Anastasia Chatska, a fashion designer with over 20 years of experience and a sewing educator. And I'm really excited you're here to share another sewing adventure with me today. Welcome to Sew Anastasia. And today we are gonna turn this sweater into a cardigan. I love wearing cardigans because I love throwing them on over dresses and two-piece outfits or with a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. But right now, we have a sweater. So let's turn it into a cardigan. If you're not already a subscriber to Sew Anastasia, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. Also, I'm now teaching virtual sewing lessons and in-person sewing lessons in my design studio in Chicago, Illinois. Information for all of that is gonna be at SewAnastasia.com or click on that link down below. We are gonna turn this sweater into this cardigan. Supplies for this project are super simple and I bet you even have them laying around the house already. You're going to need some buttons. You're also going to need some ribbons so that way we can finish the edges for the opening of the cardigan. My ribbon's gonna be an inch and a half wide but you can use any width that works for you. You're also going to need some scissors. You're going to need some chalk and you're also going to need a ruler. And that's it. That's our supply list for transforming a sweater into a cardigan. The first thing we need to do is find the very center of the sweater so that way we can cut it open. So go ahead and grab your ruler and let's measure from shoulder to shoulder around the neckline and find the center and also measure at the hem from the side seam to the side seam and find the center. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw a line down at center front and cut it open. So the bottom hem of my sweater is 22 inches, so half of that is going to be 11. So I'm gonna put a blue chalk mark here. And now when I come up to the top, I wanna go ahead and carefully measure the neckline, walking the ruler all the way around the neckline. Mine is 12, so that means I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark at six. Another easy way to do this is just folding the sweater in half and going and putting a mark at half. Now grab your chalk and let's connect those two marks. So I have a line going all the way down the center of my sweater. And now we're gonna cut it open. Try not to pull your sweater while you're doing this so that way it doesn't unravel. So I've cut open my sweater from the neck all the way down to the hem. So now it's starting to resemble a cardigan. Next, grab your ribbon because we need to cut some lengths that are a little bit longer than center front. So what I'm gonna do is just lay my ribbon on center front a little bit past the neckline and a little bit past the hem, and then we can go ahead and cut it. And we're gonna need two lengths because we need one for the right and one for the left side. Now grab your pins because we're gonna pin down the ribbon to center front. So I'm leaving some extra ribbon at the top of the neckline. We're gonna be folding that under later. So go ahead and line up the ribbon right on that raw edge that you have here. Careful not to pull the sweater while you're pinning this. It's gonna be really important that you don't pull it because we don't want it to stretch out and get wavy or look buckly. And if you have a sweater that is stretching out when you're sewing it, you could always put some interfacing here as well. You could put the interfacing on the back side, maybe about an inch wide. I'm repurposing some old ribbon, that's why it has these little spots in it, but that's gonna be hidden when we turn it to the inside, so I'm not worried about that. Now you're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side, and then we're ready to go over to the sewing machine. Today I'm gonna to be using the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2 sewing machine. I'm also gonna be using an overcast stitch and the J foot, so make sure you put on your J foot and switch to the overcast stitch. So now we're gonna sew the ribbon to the sweater, and we're gonna go ahead and overcast it. We're gonna overcast it because it's gonna bind the raw edge of the sweater and sew down the ribbon at the same time. Now I wanna be close to the edge, but I don't wanna be so close that I'm not catching the sweater knit. So make sure your stitch is wide enough to catch the sweater knit. This is gonna depend on what kind of sweater you're sewing as well. So someone might need a wider stitch and someone else might need a narrower stitch. Make sure you back stitch. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna make my stitch length a little bit longer. Keep checking to make sure that your ribbon is lined up with the side of the sweater. When you get to the end, make sure you backstitch and cut. Now that you have it sewn on, it should look something like this. So you have this nice overcast stitch that's stitching on the ribbon and it's finishing the raw edge of the sweater all at the same time. How awesome. Next, we're gonna go ahead and push our ribbon over and we're gonna do a little edge stitch on the edge of the ribbon, making sure that we're sewing on top of the seam allowance. That's gonna ensure that the ribbon lays nice and flat. And for this step, I've switched over to the A foot, which is my normal foot, and a straight stitch. So remember your edge stitch is about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. Make sure you back stitch. And back stitch at the end. And cut. Now when it's edge stitched, it should look something like this. The next step is gonna be taking the ribbon and turning it to the inside of the garment and stitching it down. So we're gonna take this ribbon and we're gonna flip it to the inside of the garment, make sure the edge is nice and crisp, and we're gonna go ahead and stitch on the other side of the ribbon. But don't forget to take these raw ends that we left and flip them to the inside and then flip over. So that way, the top of your garment and the bottom of your garment looks nice and finished. Now we're gonna go ahead and stitch on the other side of the ribbon about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And don't forget the back stitch. As you're sewing, make sure that everything is nice and flat. If it helps you, you could pin this first. The ribbon is all stitched down now and it's making the inside of the garment look so nice and finished. And we finished that raw edge there with the ribbon too. So this is such a nice extra touch. And this is gonna create extra reinforcement when we put buttonholes and buttons on the cardigan. So the outside looks like this and the inside looks like this. And now you're gonna wanna do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that we have the ribbon all sewn on, it's time to add buttonholes. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is A, pick out a button figure out how big it is so we know how big to make our buttonholes, and also figure out a placement you would like for your buttons. So I've measured out about two inches in between each button. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some marks down the front of my cardigan so I know exactly where to put the buttons. So I've determined how big my buttonhole is going to be with my sewing machine, and my buttonhole foot goes backwards and then forwards, so I've marked the top of my buttonhole. So I like to do one buttonhole, and then I'm gonna go ahead and measure down so I know where to start the next one. Now make sure you're also going to be sewing these buttonholes in the middle of this satin. So you're gonna have to make sure you're in the middle of it as well. If it helps, you could go ahead and mark the center. I'm gonna be using an automatic buttonhole foot. If your sewing machine has one, you can follow along. Or if you have a manual buttonhole foot, no worries, go ahead and do your manual buttonholes. Or if you wanna sew them by hand, go ahead and sew your buttonholes by hand. So when you're doing buttonholes, just make sure that you're guiding your fabric so your buttonholes don't turn out crooked. And cut. So I have my first buttonhole up here and I'm gonna start measuring at the bottom of my buttonhole and I'm gonna come down three inches and put a mark and then that's where I'm gonna start my next buttonhole. And I'm just gonna continue doing this all the way down my cardigan. Now let's check out our second buttonhole. This buttonhole looks great on the front and on the back. If you're wondering how this buttonhole foot works, it goes backwards with a straight stitch, it makes a bar tack, it comes back, with a zigzag stitch, it comes over, 
It goes back up with a straight stitch, back down with a zigzag stitch, and then it bar tacks at the end, ending up with a complete buttonhole. Now that I have these two buttonholes complete, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the buttonholes on my cardigan, going down three inches at a time until I reach the bottom of my cardigan. Now that we have all of our buttonholes finished, grab your X-Acto blade and let's open them up. This is the easiest way to open up buttonholes and it creates such a nice smooth edge. So take your razor blade and start at the top of your buttonhole and just drag it down the very center to the end of your buttonhole. And then you're gonna notice a nice clean line. Check that out, so easy. Now go ahead and open up the rest of your buttonholes. The next step is going to be sewing on our buttons and this is our last step. We are so close to wearing this cute comfy cardigan. So grab your marking pen or chalk and let's mark where these buttons need to go. I really like using a marking pen or a marker for this step because it creates such a nice fine point. But make sure you're not using a regular marker, you don't want to ruin your garment. This one I'm using here is heat soluble. In order to mark the button placement on this side, we need to go ahead and take our side that has the buttonholes in it and lay it on top of it. And make sure it's lined up properly. So once we have it nice and lined up, we can go ahead and mark where the buttons are gonna go. So I like to take my marking pen and I put it right in the center of the buttonhole. I twirl it around a little bit and you can see there's a little mark here where I need to put my button. So that'll indicate where the button goes. So let's mark all of our buttonholes all the way down our cardigan. Now that we have all of the button positions marked, let's grab our hand sewing needle and sew these buttons on. I'm gonna be using this fun plastic button. It has like a vintage feel to it and it has a shank on the back of it so I don't have to worry about creating a thread shank. So these are super easy to sew. I like to make sure that my button is on my thread. So I have two threads tied in a knot on my needle. I'm gonna go ahead and put the needle through the loop and now my button is gonna be hanging on my thread. So that's gonna put all the tension on the button, which is really important when sewing on a sweater because you don't want this little knot that we've created on the thread to pull through the sweater. So all the tension is gonna be created on the back of the button. Now go ahead and stick your needle through the front of the cardigan to the back. Go ahead and pull that out from the back to the front and go through the little loop on the back of the button. And now you wanna go ahead and loop around your button probably three or four times just to make sure that it's nice and secure. After you've done this, go ahead and go to the back of your cardigan and make a little knot. Take your needle and go through the loop and pull. And now you can go ahead and cut off the thread. And now we have a button on our cardigan. I love these buttons with this cardigan. It's such a nice match. Now I'm gonna sew on the rest of my buttons on the front of my cardigan, and then I'm gonna try it on for you and show you the transformation. We did it! We turned the sweater into a cardigan. We have buttonholes and buttons down the center of our sweater, and we opened it up. So now we have a nice cardigan that we can wear with our denim and t-shirts, our dresses, or you can probably button it up and just wear it as a dress too, or at least this one you could. Um, so now you can take all your sweaters and turn them into cardigans if you like. Super easy to do. Look how nice this finish turned out with the satin ribbon on the inside of the cardigan. I love this technique. It finishes off the edge so nice and it gives you some extra stability for the buttonholes and the buttons. It just looks so nice and professional. You would never know that we did this. And don't worry, we're gonna get rid of these chalk marks. Those are not permanent. If you have any questions or comments about this project, leave it down below and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. I would also love to see your thrift flips from sweater to cardigan. So make sure you tag me in them or DM me photos and I will share them with everybody else. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give it some applause and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you don't already follow Soe Anastasia, make sure you follow Soe Anastasia on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and all those other fabulous social media sites so that way we can stay connected and creative. If you're not already a subscriber to Sony Anastasia, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And don't forget, I'm now teaching virtual sewing lessons and in-person sewing lessons as well. Information for that is at SoAnastasia.com or click that link down below. 
And if you hop on over to Patreon, we would love even if you donated a dollar a month. It keeps us going, growing, and selling, so hop on over to Patreon and keep loving us. Thanks so much for watching!